please welcome him. But this man carries power. He is an epitome of kingdom authority and a humble tool of kingdom advancement. A man who calls things that be not and indeed they become. Yokes are about to be broken and captives will be set free because this servant of God has a mandate to strive for the rebirth of apostolic Christianity. Prepare your hearts to be ignited and your spirits refreshed as we welcome the founder and leader of Remnant Christian Network, McCordy. With a standing ovation and a round of applause, let's welcome to Wine Press 2022, Apostle Adome Osai. Hallelujah. Wow, it's a great privilege standing here. <laughs> Amen. I want to thank Pastor B, my friend, and all the pastors in the house for inviting me. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, in the name of Jesus, we ask that you move through this atmosphere and meet everyone at the point of their needs. Make for yourself a great name and be glorified in Jesus' mighty name. You may be seated. Those of you outside, you are part of this meeting. Uh, fasten your seatbelts. We want to go on a ride. First Corinthians chapter 4, beginning from verse number 20. <laughs> Hallelujah. First Corinthians chapter 4, beginning from verse number 20. For the kingdom of God is not in word but in power. The kingdom of God is not in word, but in power. I used to be a classroom teacher, and we were trained to teach, to pass on knowledge. And if you are a teacher in the sciences, you may need to illustrate some of your concepts by the means of diagrams. If the kingdom of God is going to be illustrated, if the kingdom of God is going to be revealed, then we need to wield the utensil called power. Because any time the power of God is manifested, it's a revelation of the capacity of the kingdom of God. And there is something that the devil will try so hard to cover, and that is the supremacy of the kingdom of light over the kingdom of darkness. And any time the power of God finds expression, it is easy to see that the kingdom of darkness is not as powerful as it claims because the power of God comes to illustrate the supremacy of the kingdom of God over the kingdom of darkness. In view of the above, I would like to do a teaching in the next 20 minutes uh, titled The Purpose of the power of God in the kingdom of God. Turn your Bible quickly to the book of Matthew, chapter 28. I want to read from verse number 17 and number 18. Matthew, chapter 28, I read from verse number 17 and verse number 18. And when they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted and Jesus came and spake unto them saying all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth go therefore and teach all nations baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost you will notice that there were 40 days interval between the time of Jesus' resurrection and the time of his public ascension. In the which 40 days, he normally appears to his disciples based on appointment. He will tell them when he encounters them, he will say, okay, my next schedule with you is going to be on Wednesday, and I'm going to be on the Mount of Olives. I'll be there by 9 a.m. 
So they normally come, gather, and wait for him, and he appears. And he begins to unveil to them uh, the realities of the kingdom of God because there were functionaries that were being trained to be partakers of the enterprise of extending the frontiers of the kingdom of God. And in this occasion, Jesus showed up on the mountaintop, which was the place of appointment, and he said, all power is given unto me in heaven and on earth. You see, if you don't see the back end of this scripture, you're not likely to understand the import of his declaration. So I want to take us to the book of um, Acts chapter 2. I want to show you the back end of that declaration. In the book of Acts chapter number 2, Hallelujah. Are you there in Acts chapter number 2? I want to begin to read from verse 22. Ye men of Israel, this is the explanation that Peter gave uh, in defense of the outpouring of the Holy Spirit because there was a, a, um, a, a, a possibility that the move of God in the upper room was about to be misjudged. So the ministry of an interpreter was required to bring perspective according to the witness of God from heaven. So this is Peter attempting to explain a spiritual thing and the context and the pivot of his explanation derived from prophecies that went before this day. He said, ye men of Israel, Hear these words, Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved of God among you by miracles and by wonders and signs, which God did by him in the midst of you, as ye yourself also know, him being delivered by the determinate counsel and the foreknowledge of God, ye have taken and by wicked hands have crucified and slain, whom God has raised up, having loosed the, the, the pains of of death because it was not possible that he should be holding of it for david speaketh concerning him i saw the lord always before my face and for he is on my right hand that i should not be moved therefore did my heart rejoice and my tongue was glad moreover also my flesh shall rest in hope because thou wilt not leave my soul in hell neither will thou suffer thine holy one to see corruption can you jump to verse number 30 therefore being a prophet and knowing that god has sworn with an oath to him that of the fruit of his loins according to the flesh he will raise up christ to sit on his throne he seen this before speak of the resurrection of christ that his soul was not left in hell neither his flesh did see corruption and this jesus god has raised up wherefore we are witnesses therefore being by the right hand of god exalted and having received of the father the promise of the holy ghost he has shed forth this which ye now see and hear for david is not ascended into the heavens but he saith himself the lord saith unto my Lord, sit thou at my right hand until I make thy foes thy footstool. Verse 36 is my emphasis. I had to do all of that reading to show you the progression of revelation. Verse 36 is a revelation of the current status of Jesus in the administration of the purposes of God. He took on these status. He he entered into the reality of this portfolio when he had satisfied the claims of divine justice and he had returned to heaven. A heavenly ministry was given unto him and his status was revealed in the book of Acts chapter 2 verse 36. The Bible says, then, uh, 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 therefore let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God has made that same Jesus whom you crucified but Lord, I don't have time to work that out. There were two capacities in the heavenlies that Jesus was brought into. There were two dimensions 
of excellencies that Jesus was brought into on the account of his resurrection and return to heaven. So when Jesus was on the mount and he was speaking to the people, it was from the perspective of his new status in the heavenlies. What did he say? He said, all power is given unto me. Are you with me? Yes, so it means that the reason for which Jesus was given power was so that he can operate his office. He had been assigned a new portfolio. And part of the compliments that came alongside that new status was that he was given all power to exercise government in heaven, on earth, and wherever, whatsoever. That is the purpose of power. One, number one. Uh, do you still remember the Bible says in the book of Acts chapter 1 verse 8, it says, ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Why? Because you are coming into the function of witnesses. And in order for you to operate your capacity as a witness, some allocation of power has to be given to you. Are you, are, are you with me? Yes, sir. Now, it, it, it means that this kingdom, you see, there is nothing in this kingdom that is not illustrated by a measure of power. In, in fact, Jesus was saying that these signs shall follow them that believe in my name. They shall cast out devil. So acts of power, capacity to will power, is the basic identity that Jesus gave for the Christian. Because the things in the kingdom of God are not in word. They have to be illustrated. And if they are not illustrated, they'll be confused. Just like the day of Pentecost. Uh, guys began to speak in tongues and people began to try to understand what they were doing from the human standpoint. And the best they could arrive at was that they were drunk. That was why an interpreter was raised. And the utterance with which he spoke was based on an enablement that came by God. You see, in the kingdom of God, a lot of things will not be understood except God assigns power for the kingdom of God is not in word, but in power. That's number one. So God gives you power so that you can illustrate, you can, you can manage a spiritual office if you are brought into a spiritual capacity the evidence to show that you operate from there is what so you see we don't need to make noise if uh, if it is true that god has brought you into a capacity in your family the proof is that there will be power available for you to operate that office if it is true that you are an apostle there will be power available to illustrate what it means to be an apostle from the perspective of the kingdom of God. It is true that God has sent you into politics as your own sphere of dominion. You are going to meet people that understand the power of darkness. You will meet cultists. People that are bowed down to demons, to principalities and Satan. And if it is true that God has sent you there, it means that God will find a vessel through which he can illustrate the capacities of his grace and power within that scope, that scope of oppression. I pray today, as you come for one press this year, what God wants to do in your life is that he wants to give you a capacity so that you can illustrate what he's sending you to achieve in the marketplace. Grace and grace will come upon you because Jesus needs to make a statement and the statement will be made through your life. Yes. Number two, power is given to those that God sends to represent him. In the book of Luke chapter number nine, we see a scenario that I'd like to draw your attention to. Luke chapter number nine. And then he called his 12 disciples together and gave them power and authority over all devils and to cure diseases. And he sent them to preach the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. Hallelujah. If you read further, you will see the matching orders that he gave them. In order for 
representatives to go in the name of Jesus Christ and extend the frontiers of the kingdom of God, uh, Jesus had to equip them. He gave them, he gave, he gave them delegated authority and he gave them power. And the power that he gave them was effective in healing diseases and in casting out devils. Oh my God. They, 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 I can tell you authoritatively, there was never a single functionary that was sent to do evangelism for Jesus that was not given the utensil of power. Just in case you meet an evangelist and all that he has is a message. He didn't finish his training. Because before Jesus sent someone to proclaim his kingdom and in the process, Jesus is aware that you are going to meet with devils. He's aware that you will meet with demons. And then he gives you the equipment so that you can be competent in your service delivery. No one went to the name of Jesus that went from the hand of Jesus that never had power to expel devils. In the book of Luke chapter 10 verse 1, the Bible says, And after these things, the Lord appointed other 70 also. What does, what does also mean? It means it is in the same way that he appointed the first set of people that he appointed the second set of people. He equipped them by making power available to them. I know someone here has read the book of Psalms chapter 24. Uh, Psalms 24 verse 1 says, The earth is the laws and the fullness thereof. The world and them that dwell therein. For he has founded it upon the floors and established it upon the seas. Who shall ascend into the hill of the Lord? Or and who shall stand in his holy place? He that has a clean hands and a pure heart that's not lifted up his soul to vanity nor sworn deceitfully, he shall receive a blessing from the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation. That's not my emphasis. The next verse is my emphasis. Lift up your heads. Yes. Oh, ye gates. Now, be thou lifted up your everlasting door. Why? Now, let me tell you. Don't forget verse 1. The first one is, the first, verse 1 is land registry. If you want to know the owner of a land, there is a department in, in, in lands and survey called the land registry. It's a compendium, it's a place that sustains the compendium of land titles in the entire Lagos. If you visit that place. If any land is under contention, you can go to land re registry. You will know who owns the land. And it happens to be uh, that in Psalms 24 verse 1, we approach land registry. Just in case there's confusion, there's contention. The earth is what? The Lord and the fullness thereof. You know, people don't visit land registry normally until there's land dispute. You will need an authority to tell us who is in possession of this particular portion of land. This scripture is, is telling us about a land dispute. Because even though it is captured in land registry that the earth is the laws and the foolish thereof, there were some princes, some powers that had colonized a particular place and they were left unchecked for aeons. And when the sons of God began to emerge, people that had matured in the things of the kingdom, Jesus delegated them just like he delegated these guys with power and authority and they went on a confrontation exercise. Their words were thus, lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be thou lifted up ye everlasting doors. Ah, today I want to train you. <laughs> I want to train you on how to talk. <laughs> Lift up your heads, O ye gates. Be thou lifted up, ye everlasting doors. Their claim to the territory, it was because they had tabernacled there for a long time, unchallenged. And so they felt because they've been unchallenged, they have a right to occupation. And that's why the scripture started with true ownership from the perspective of land registry and what God would take his functionaries through in order for them to become authentic and chattered. Uh, those authentic and chattered individuals are the ones he sends to the gates. Mm. If you have read the Old Testament, you'll find out um, the politics of Israel 
what we call the House of Representatives, what we call the House of Assembly, what we call the Senate, in our own modern parlance, is what was called the gate in those days. You see, when decisions were to be taken that were binding upon everyone that was in the city, those decisions were taken at the gate. In, according to Israeli culture, that's the place where authority derives. So the decisions that are taken at the gate will be binding on the guys in the city. The guys in the city, maybe the guys just sitting by the gate, maybe 24 people. By the end of that meeting, what they decide will become modus operandi in the, in the city. So it doesn't, you don't need to take the city. If you influence what obtains at the gate, you are in control of the city. So these guys that were trained by God and armed with the equipment that it takes to illustrate the kingdom, they came to where the authorities were and they gave a command based on the strength of what they carried. Lift up your heads. You see, you see, you see, you see, if authorities are not challenged, you know the implication? They will colonize. For, for, for some of you here, you are not the colonial master of your family. There are some forces. There are authorities. There are people that speak for darkness, that have taken over the gate. And you are a mere victim of the politics of power that takes place in that space. But God wants to wear you with a new garment. <laughs> He wants to put a new garment on your life. Because by the authority and the power of God, you will take this battle to where the authorities reside. Do you still remember what Jesus said? He said, upon this rock, I will build my church. And then, and what will happen? The gates of Hades. The gates of Hades. It means Hades has authority. And the authorities of Hades, they labor to bring everything that has the divine life to experience death so that there will be no authority that is left to challenge their presence. But Jesus said, I'm going to be the architect of the civil engineer that will build my church. I will not leave it to angels. I will build my church. I will build my functionaries. I will build my people. And when he says he will build his people, it means he will be quick to them as they mature in him. Power and authority to be able to represent him. Because our destiny is that the gates of Hades shall not prevail. So I don't know your context. I don't know what's happening in your context. And who stands at the gate in your civilization who stands at the gate in your family. But you see what God does to the people that he wants to send to represent him is that he galvanizes them with power and authority. Tonight is a night of power. It's a night of authority. We are going to challenge some things tonight. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We are going to challenge some things tonight. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We went for a crusade in a terrible place. He said, it's one of the dark places of the earth that the Bible speaks about. Where the name most revered, the spirit most feared, is from the underworld. <laughs> so we went there to preach the gospel. And we showed up too early because the guys are farmers. It doesn't matter what you put on your poster. Say 5 p.m. Nobody will come there. They will go to farm fest. Come back by 7. Pound, pound, they the Take it with okra soup. Some will sleep. Wake up. And then by nine, you will see some of them will stand far away because they don't understand the, the, the God you are advertising. They'll stand. So all the seats you put on the crusade grounds for you. God, they will, they will come and you see, you could see how the gates had manipulated the city. <laughs> you could see how the gates had maligned the civilization. And we went there to proclaim the name of the Lord Jesus. So because we came too early, um, I told my, my people, let's go and visit the shrine. Now, now, listen to me. If you are not, I was led. If you are not led. <laughs> if, if you are not led. 
Don't be there. <laughs> I had a lady. Because the Holy Ghost said, why not pass some of this time in the shrine? I said, oh, hallelujah. So I took a tall guide, someone that could speak the local language. And we went. And the shrine is on a hilly place. And the priest, who was 100 years old at the time we had this encounter, had sacrificed to the 22 altars of the land. He had boosted the masts and empowered witches within the local territory. The mast of necromancy was standing high. When we came and the man turned back and he looked at me. He said, who are you? I said, we come in peace. He said, I don't trust you. And then the, my interpreter told me that. I don't trust you. I said, no, you don't need to trust me. You know, when people come to places, you can visit the governor, you can visit the functionary. I have decided to visit the shrine. Then he tried to threaten me. I said, oh, you are not aware of the one that I represent. <laughs> you are not aware. If you go that way, you will suffer loss. Put down your hand before I curse it. Then he looked for a smart way and he brought the hand down. At the end of our encounter, I led them to Christ. Led. Meanwhile, as we were discussing, nine other old men as old as himself joined us. I led him to Christ, led all of them to Christ. And I, and I insisted that they should kneel down. So we shut down the mast. That was the crusade we went for. While we were singing the Lord's song on the crusade ground. No preach on the pulpit. Three crippled people rose up. It was an announcement. It was an illustration. God was coming back to the territory. There was nothing Satan could do about it. Lift up your hands so you get. You can change the atmosphere. You can change the temperature. You can change the season. We come in the name of the Lord Jesus. Oh! It's yet the Father has sent me. So send I you. And he breathed on them. Jesus sent me today. Somewhere along the line I will breathe through this microphone. Because some of you are going to be sent this night. We come in the name of the Lord Jesus. Can you say something to the gates of your family? Lift up your heads. All ye gates. And be thou lifted up ye everlasting doors. And the King of glory. He shall come in. There is a majestic entry that he wants to make. There is a majestic, majestic entry. The gates of the territory are, are bound to be lifted. A new God, a new government is coming into the space. His name is Jesus Christ. Every spirit must take dressing. Everyone must pay attention. A new king comes. A new government comes. A new God comes. So lift up your heads. So lift up your heads. So lift up your heads. Whoa. We said sickness. It's time for you to leave. Gloominess. It's time for you to go away. I banish that fear on your heart. Step into faith in the name of Jesus. Oh. Come and I to escape a sea. Rastavo Lampele. Rakose Matabakuria. Abai to Kobela. Presco Valima Stabo. Samena Capresco Valatata. Apresu Kila. La Bakiria. Samena Compresketo. Ayabo. Ayabo Scamina Tala Babore. Escofil. Escopalamo. Escofela Mascadia Bataya. Ah, the little ones have become a thousand. A small one shall become a strong nation. Though thy beginning be small, thy 
later end, it shall increase. Therefore, the redeemed of the Lord shall return. They shall come with singing unto Zion. An everlasting joy will be upon their head. They shall proclaim gladness and joy. And sorrow and mourning shall flee away. Lift up your hands, O ye gates. Moresquito, Parasco Pelaito Satelia, Bante Colabora, Aita Cabesco Velamina Cabawa, Semino Cabresqueto Cabela, Racaba Sumena Caliata, Racosquela, Asamena, Sacubila Nete. I compass to Banana Raseca Boko Bacatala Raka Bashanga Bagoria Alala Sabarata Babore Bacadiama Ascovelan Raka Boskete Oh Be thou lifted up the everlasting Lord For the King of Glory he shall come King strong, King mighty, nothing can stand in his way. We proclaim his name, his kingdom, his majesty. Lift up your head. spirit and I saw the hand of the Lord touching eyes <laughs> touching eyes now listen oh my god the Lord says there are seven people in this crowd. Seven people in this crowd. He wants to open your spiritual eyes. He will wash your eyes with eyes salve so that you can see. He's preparing you. He wants to use you to represent his name. Woo! I want to pray for you before we pray one prayer point. Father, in the name of Jesus. The seven people that you said you will give them sight in the spirit. I ask, oh God, that your hand of power. Okay, it's coming already. It's coming. It's coming already. It's coming. The hand descends already. It descends already. It descends already. It's so that you can be given visibility in the spirit. Your, the eyes of your spirit can be opened. I see a flame of fire descend from heaven. There is an evangelist. You are female. God wants you to take fire to the nations. And that fire comes upon you now. It comes 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 now. Oh my God. Holy Ghost. Move. Someone deaf in one of the ears. I break 
the hold of deafness and I command deafening spirits be bound in the name of Jesus Christ. Come out of that ear in Jesus name. I see someone in the congregation you are going to be very fluent in the deliverance ministry and there's an anointing and authority that comes upon you at the count of seven you will have your way wherever demons are found you will have your way and the hand of God comes to you in seven seconds one two three four five six seven I see someone in the overflow outside there and the hand of God comes upon you God wants to send you back from the place you run away from. He's galvanizing you to send you back to the same place with power and with authority. It is your duty to extend his influence in the territory. And so grace, grace, grace comes upon your life. Last prayer point. And upon this rock I will build my church he's been building you he has something in mind and the gates the authorities of Hades they shall not prevail oh my god he wants to send you ahead of him to go open doors that are shut and to shut doors that are open if you can feel what I'm saying, begin to receive, begin to receive it right now. Because you are the prophet of your family. It is by your hand that things will change. Oh, reach out and receive. <laughs> Seliko beluske te mina kaito Efo saminala Braska falambos ke bonisko brisko falamina Braikas ke miso sela Braka busa mante kobo Braka saminole Semino koske tabila kabelaita Shaba kompreskeli seri mokonda Semino kompreska fula Braka basema kompre Rase so seli, abate kope lamina, pras kempos kope la kaba. Oh, be thou lifted up, be everlasting God, and the King of glory is a coming. Thank you, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Jesus said, as the Father sent me, so send I you. Then he breathed on them and said, receive ye the Spirit. If you can, be quiet. If you can. Because I have an instruction to breathe into this microphone. And as I do that, you will receive the Spirit. I ask Lord tonight, the functionaries you've been preparing to send, to challenge the gates. Equip them. Like in that great spiritual ceremony of Luke chapter 9, equip them tonight. He will come to you. The Lord sends you. And so his hand comes upon you. It's a new season. The gates of hell must bar 
for the kingdom of God is not in world but in power 